mtumaiza na teku MGD TV kuprogram ya fetch ongele kuona nge omwede zao Angel Grace tuwa tuongela kumite menja ulo ewe koze ama ulile okwe tolola kumata so nga temba nchaza awa nta menja ulo nga batuwa enuoza zawe wabula na umulagu wafomulu nga soro kwa nga utuwa enuoza yu okwe ita wa simu comment section wabwa soro kusindi kame sendi kumoti musami noti noti tano satu tano mkaga noti emu or you can say zero seven zero zero five three five six zero one mu studio ona koranelo and nawo ongenyi wange era agenda kuwanga abe yanjira and a lot of people watching you out there you can introduce yourself well my name is Shedrick Ayevale uh, i have a very few titles to my name i can't say a lot i'm a former guild president for Makere Institute for Social Development 2021-2022, yes, and also others are, are not so important. Uh, you have been a politician throughout your campus, mm. right? Uh, tell us about your, because you've served numerous political offices, tell us about your political journey. Well, if I can start, my journey began at a very young age, right from primary. Okay. when I was appointed to be a house house prefect <laughs> then secondary of course again I got another appointment because I didn't campaign What's or the role of a house prefect? you're then in charge of you see for us in primary we had the houses for MDD and sports so every house had someone to represent it on the pre oh, prefectorial right. body I get you. yes so then sec again in secondary I got an appointment again in my O level to be a part of the disciplinary committee even the same with A level, again, I got an appointment to be the welfare prefect for food. <laughs> yes. Then now, campus is now where I, I had to contest for my first political office, mm -hmm. which was the guild president. Now in high school, didn't you feel offended? You know, like, uh, people don't want to be like, eh? They don't want to be prefects for food, <laughs> welfare. Well, they think like you eat too much and they make fun of people. Uh, they may, uh, your fellow friends make fun of you, so did you feel offended? No, not really. Well, surprisingly, in high school, being a welfare prefect was always the, the, the real deal. Yeah. Because you're the one in charge of the food, the buns, the milk, the porridge. It's and your will decide. Kind of different from of course, other. yours was always different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I get you. So you contested? Uh, yes. For, for guild presidency. Guild president. That was now at my campus level. Because that one was a step I had to take for myself. That doesn't come with appointment since it was something very challenging mm -hmm. but as you know too much investment happens with guild presidency um how challenging was it mm, finances then also the political affiliation i was in and it was a very tricky time because that was during the 2021 elections mm -hmm. i was also in that same period and then the party i chose to come with oh my god but <laughs> luckily enough things came through and i made it as oh, the which president party? which party did you come the national, <laughs> <laughs> the national resistance movement known as the NRM. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, I find it, uh, it becomes difficult uh, at some point. Exactly. So are uh, you said uh, about the funding, like it was, so you mean as a guild president you should encourage? Yeah, well, because before the national, the national resistance party endorses you, you first have to put in a little funds prior to the process of endorsement. Yeah. So the challenge I had was those first weeks before I was endorsed, I had to inject in my own money, convincing students, <laughs> getting that support. Then, but as you know, luckily enough, I got the connection through a friend who introduced me to the NRM secretariat. So when they had to sit down and look at my manifesto, and then they also look at your ground roots, are you farm on ground? Then the funding comes in place. So okay. that's how I luckily, I can say luckily because it wasn't a very easy Are you journey. still looking, uh, are you still looking uh, through politics? Do you plan, do you intend to, to take it to the national level? Mm. Or? Yeah, of course, because now, by the time I came out to contest for guild presidency, yeah. that means I want to represent the concerns of my fellow students. And for the national level, I have the interest to now represent the concerns of my constituents, of the people where I represent. So, national level, I'm coming. How prepared are you? <laughs> Very prepared. <laughs> really? Yes. I understand. So, according uh, to Uganda, has the highest uh, percentage of youth 
uh, but uh, of youth who are, who are who are contesting for leadership, but sadly they are not given opportunity. Yeah, true. What do you have to say about that? Well, the challenge we have as Uganda is we still see the old people as the ones who can think for everyone. When the actual reality is, if you look at Ugandan statistics, yeah. the youth comprise of 78%. That means out of a 48.5 million population of Uganda, the youth carry a very big percentage. Sure. And then what beats my understanding is that how can an elder represent a youth? Seriously, it doesn't add up because yeah, doesn't. the concerns of the youth are easily understood by fellow youth. So you can't again tell an elder to be. And now the well, challenge. There is that saying that says um, mm. an old broom. <laughs> yes, old so, brooms. So, old brooms. Uh, so I think uh, the elders, they know better. They can no, they no, no, no. represent the youth better because they know everything. No, no, not really. Okay. They can represent their fellow elderly yeah. very well. Okay. Yeah, but the youth, it's very hard. Because if you look at the youth and the challenges we have, yes. it can best be understood by fellow youth. Because you live within them, you've been one, you've experienced it, and you're actually still experiencing it. So, that's, and now that challenge is, I don't know how we shall get rid of that gap, because the elders really don't want to get rid of office. Exactly. So, um, knowing that there is that challenge, knowing that there is that gap, what have you done with your ability? What have you done in order to bridge that gap? Well, first of all, me, me as me, when I was in office, I've tried to bring out, as for Guild Presidency, I tried to bring in place very many youth ventures. Because, like, for example, I have a campaign that is for the girl child, the Pada Girl campaign, which is running. Oh, wow. And I'm very happy it's moving smoothly. Yes. Then I also have uh, a campaign for the young boys, which is a savings scheme where when they get money they get to do the bricks get you know have their own mechanics shops yeah, right. so that means i'm not trying to make youth relevant in society mm -hmm. then now the issue is if you have an elder in in, in office or in power yes. they can't see that an elder although think about is let me lobby for my fellow elders let me do this but for us what we look at is we look at the youth major and most of my projects target the youth exactly let's go for a short break i'll be right back Welcome to MGD Media, where our state-of-the-art studios are based. We offer a variety of media services and production, which include music production, video production, photography, online marketing, printing of all sorts of documents. We also offer space to produce talk shows using our latest technology at affordable prices. Welcome back from the short commercial break. I'm still here with Mr. Shedrach. Uh, Mr. Shedrach. As we're still talking, you said like um, the youth should be given opportunity, the youth should read the youth, reason being they understand the fellow youth. Well, um, there is this challenge, why is it that the, the, why is it that the youth who tend to rise up, uh, they are put down, most especially, let me say for example, the ones in university, they're in prison, in case they, they bring out their voice. They are imprisoned, they are tortured, they are put down, they, they don't want them to, to be hard, they don't want them to say out what they have to say. What do you have to say about that? Well, for me, all I can start with, if you look at all innovations that are coming out in the world, they are all made by youth. Okay. All the creativity of innov innovations, be it cars, be it phones, be it what, the elder reach a point and their mind locks up. But for us, the youth, our mind keeps what? Keeps researching, keeps finding out. Yes. And the issue of fellow youth being arrested, being tortured, being killed mm -hmm. in universities because of politics, it's yes. very absurd and very unfortunate. But the challenge is maybe the medium we use to communicate our feelings is a very wrong one. Oh. Because first of all, we know we have a government in place, yes. which we must respect exactly. as youth. Yes, we might have grievances we want to communicate about, but the medium of communication we use is bad. If you look at all those, the torturing, the arrests, the killing, how do they come about? They come about when there's too much chaos. Demonstration and then stealing of people's property, all that can be something very bad. Yes. If you can have your peaceful demonstration, it's understandable. In that even if the police comes out to arrest you or torture you, we have a right to go to court. 
But if you're arrested in a chaos, if you're arrested in maybe you're rioting and stealing people's property, looting, for example, yes. they are trust me. It will be very hard to even defend you in court. So it's like it's okay for them to be to be arrested? No, it's not okay. It's never okay to be arrested because we are also human beings. We have a right to what? To say what we are feeling. Because as you know, Uganda is a free country. So we have also the right. The only unfortunate part is that right now there is too much negativity in there, in the freedom space. Yes. When you come out to express yourself, someone can think you want to overthrow the government, when actually it's something very wrong. So what should be done? What, uh, in what way should, they, should these youth express themselves? Uh, what do you think should be done in order to correct them, uh, in order to, to guide them on how they should express their feelings? First and foremost, create a channel where these youth can reach out to. Because okay. if you look at even the representatives of the youth, some are not young people. Oh. Some are above the age bracket of the youth, if uh, you get to be keen, let's notice. Where does the, where does the age, uh, where does the youth age stop? By Uganda, we talk of 30, sometimes 35. Okay. But you find like from 18 to 35 or 18 to 30. Okay. But you find someone representing the youth is yes. like 38, 39. You see that? And now this person is thinking, starts be thinking beyond the youth age. Now the person is looking at their retirement. They start looking, how am I going to make money to leave office of power? That's why we sometimes say, well, actually what hurts me the most is, if you look at the 557 MPs we have in Parliament of Uganda, yes. youth are only represented in regions, like sure. the northern region, eastern region, southern region, western, and central. So what they're trying to mean is, does it mean that out of the 557 MPs, yes. we have only like five youth MPs representing youth? That wouldn't be really sensible. It wouldn't. The same way women have equal representation in parliament. Because if you look at each district that sends a, like an MP in parliament, mm. they have the MP, they have the woman MP. The woman MP. Yes. So if we could make it a bit balanced and say instead of dividing districts or, or like splitting up districts into many pieces make it simple say each district sent three representatives yes. a male i mean the overall mp then the woman mp okay. and the youth mp oh that's there. how you think it should be yes there it will make very much more better sense other than you saying mm. out of the 557 only five are representing youth that doesn't add up it doesn't it doesn't because these 557 you're looking at most of these are businessmen. He will look at the money he invested in. And that way it will kill the channel through which youth will communicate. That's why if you look at the few MPs who, or the youth MPs who are in parliament, when they stand up to speak on the floor of parliament, they speak the views of the youth. Unemployment, high cost of living, tuition structures being very high. Those are the issues that affect the youth. Uh, uh, as a youth, uh, how do you think these youth would gain from these politics and from from the politics? Well, actually, to be honest, youth don't benefit from politics. Really? Because I can be a very good example. If you look at during my elections or my campaign for guild presidency, yes. a lot of money was invested in by the NRM. But the question is, what does the NRM do after you've finished your political ambitions for presidency? Okay. It's like their journey with you ends the moment you win the but the presidency. Oh, I for the bragging rights. You won. No, I can challenge my fellow guild, my fellow people who have been presidents before, who are out there. Let them come out and tell you <laughs> what they are today. Very few yes. go into political positions of power. The rest are either now doing bricklaying or maybe mechanical engineering. Like they forgot about that life. That means the only best way these political parties can benefit is if you invest a lot of money in someone to contest for presidency at university or institution, let that person be the, the future of your political party. Yeah. If you want, for example, MP of Chiri and Dongo, Kiva and North, yes. and Shedrick came out and contested for guild presidency at Makere Institute for Social Development, he should be the next person you groom for the, the position. That way, youth who will come in parliament yes. will discuss youthful ideas. Sure. Once we now bring elderly, of course, you see how campaigns they be, they promise you we shall do this, buy some hospital beds, reduce on taxes. 
But if you're to ask the area MP of your areas, mm. have the taxes reduced? No. No. The hospitals have medication? No. Now, even what hurts the most, the campaign I'm running for Pada Girl campaign. Yeah. Pads are taxed a lot. We even reached a point we had to approach the former Speaker of Parliament, right, Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. We asked her that question like, we are running a pads campaign, but why are taxes, why are pads so expensive? Yet government has the, how can I say, is it audacity to put free condoms in hospitals? Why can't they also put a dispenser for free sanitary pads? Yeah, because uh, I, 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 I look at um, the life of the girl child out there, most especially the ones in the villages. Exactly. I don't think they have access to use those. They don't. Because now I have really seen painful scenarios of the girls suffering. You go to a, a village and then a girl tells you, for us, we don't know sanitary parts. Right. All we know, Anna leaves funny clothes. Then you wonder why. And they say, for us here to buy a sanitary pad, you must sleep with the man to give you that money. Wow. Yet we have a government in place. We have MPs representing these people. Yes. And then it would only be understood by a youth. And if, that's when the idea of the youth would come in. Yes. True. Because if we had a, a youth representative, uh, they would understand what their fellow youth ladies are going through. That's why I told you the problems of the youth can be understood by youth, by youth. not by an older person. True. Because uh, there is no way, you know, older people, they will be thinking, uh, they will be thinking a lot of things and then they will... <laughs> they will be thinking of retirement. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm sure, I'm sure you've gained a lot from politics. Mm. I'm sure you've gained a lot from yeah, politics. Yeah, I've gained uh, a lot. What are some of the things that you've achieved? Well, first and foremost, I have, achieved, I have achieved a very good network of friends. Okay. Most, most being my former guild presidents. Yes. In that we have reached a point, we have come out from just being former presidents to now colleagues and brothers and sisters. Sure. In that we think of ideas that can benefit a youth. We come out and say, you know what? You have a connection in this, you have a connection in this. Let's come together, put up something for the youth, and it moves. Yeah. Mm. And most now, for example, is I have a colleague in Soroti. For him, he organizes youth symposiums every year. Wow. He makes sure, and when he organizes that, he brings the area MPs of Eastern region to come together and meet the youth and get to realize the pains of the youth, which are real. So that shows you that it's only a youth who can understand the pain of the youth, yes. not an elder. Okay. And then the other benefit I've gotten is, of course, the public respect, because now, you know, they say once a president, always a president. True. But then people always come to you for consultation and guidance. Yes. How can you do this? How, how is this done? Because they believe you contesting there, you participating in that, you have a, a different reasoning and a different capacity. Okay. And also the other benefit is now I have a vision to say, okay, I want to now fight for the youth. Yes. Mm. Wow, that's good. Uh, and I'm sure you want to fight for the youth, you've got a lot of benefits, but there's those challenges that hinder you sometimes from achieving what you're looking at, uh, from reaching where you want to reach. What are some of the challenges you're facing in this politics industry? Well, the first challenge is the elders thinking you can't do something. Wow. You know, elders believe when a youth comes out, I want to do this. They say, ah, no, you don't have experience. It's very sad. It's Yet, unfortunately, if you look at all the people who are in parliament today, almost 55% of them have been in parliament for over 25 years. That means they also gained experience by learning on job. And most of them even weren't even class monitors way back in school. But now for us, the experience we have is we have been student leaders. Yes. We have represented the views of students on the board of governors. Where you, where you get up and, and tell a principal, tuition is too high. You have over one million students, but let it be at least this minimum amount because students come from different walks of life. Sure. So the first challenge is that when you come out and say, I'm coming for office, the elderly start, ah, and I have no experience, what, what, then you wonder. They, were they born with experience? They also learned it. The other, the other challenge is politics has become very expensive. If you see campaigns, if you don't have money, people don't listen to you. True. Yes, so True. those are the two big challenges which we as youth face in politics. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm sure 
this message is sinking in one of the youth heart who is watching this um i would love you to advise the youth out there who are watching you because they would love words of encouragement uh, they would love to hear from you they would love to get that advice from you what kind of advice do you give to the youth out there well the advice i can give the youth out there is believe in yourself because trust me it's only you who knows how your journey is going to be and what you want from your journey people will come out and say you can't do this you can't do that but for you ask yourself one question when you are deciding to start what you are doing or are they there with you of course not that means it's only you who knows how your vision is what your end goal is and how you want to make it possible make it in life sorry so i encourage all the youth out there no matter who says you can't no matter who says you're not qualified no matter who says it's not your time Tell them for you. You feel confident. You believe in God's ways. God has blessed you to believe in that. Wow. Thank you. That's a really, really, really good advice. I take it to you personally. Well, uh, you can send your regards to a few people who are watching you. I'm sure a lot of people are watching you right now. Yeah. Well, my regards, I would send my regards to my family first and foremost because they have been very supportive, right from my grandmother, Jajana Gabena. Then to my guardian parents, Honorable Samuel Warotada and Esther Akulo, and also my colleagues. It's just a big family. And also to the people of Chivanda North constituency, that's in Kiriandongo district. I hope they are ready for the man who's making noise here. But I just say my regards to Uganda. Let's maintain peace, let's love each other, let politics not divide us, but unite. Thank you for watching from right where we began from till now that we are closing up with our program. I have been with Mr. Ayema Shadrach and he has told us to believe in ourselves, to trust ourselves. The sky is the limit and the youth out there, you can, you can make it, you can change the world. Just believe in yourself. Well, yana ina leyo awiyanti ayagala kola business na fe. Sangi wa kabala gala emabega wa equity bank. Obo solo kwa kunoti msambu noti noti tano satu tano mukaga noti emu. Or you can say zero seven zero zero five three five six zero one. Let me know what you think about this show in the comment section. Till we meet again. Bye bye.